Some of you guys are shocked that they're giving estrogen and female sex hormones to men in order to combat the big bad virus. So there's still so much we don't know about this virus. Researchers around the world continue to study it, hoping to understand how it spreads, whom it affects, and whether we can develop immunity. So here's what we do know. The virus appears to be killing men at a much higher rate than women. At least that's according to some of the limited data we're getting from a handful of countries. But researchers here in the US are now trying to figure out if there's actually some truth to that. So they're conducting a study to determine if estrogen, a female hormone, can reduce the severity of symptoms in men. Yes, we can talk about the depopulation agenda, how making people infertile is a large part of that and that men are the victims, but the overarching concern is what's already going on with our food and water supply. They have already been giving men estrogen in order to reduce their fertility and make them more feminine, aka fairy boy. I did a video a few months back, Michaela Peterson Wants to Feminize Men where I explain the various ways they're polluting us with estrogenic endocrine disruptors. All of the chemicals from plastics, birth control, the antibiotics in our water supply, plus all of the estrogenic agrochemicals, the herbicides they are spraying on our crops. Both the crops we are eating, the fruits, vegetables, and grains, and the surplus that's being fed to livestock. This results in feedlot meats, beef, pork, chicken, even eggs and dairy being incredibly high in estrogen, again, due to herbicides like atrazine accumulating in the tissue of the animals from a lifelong diet of agrochemical sprayed crap, soy, and corn. Ooh-wee! So just about everything the average person puts in their body on a daily basis, the food, the water, what they touch, is excessively estrogenic. Not to mention the soy formulas and processed soy garbage foods we are feeding our babies and children. This hormonal imbalance results in feminine behavior in men and masculine behavior in women. If you want to learn more about that, check out my video. A vegan diet will make you a fairy boy. So, I'm not too concerned with the estrogen part of this story. The main thing to point out is how the public is taking all of this information like a sissy la la boy with no brain. Secondarily, that the virus actually seems to target the male reproductive system, the testicles. Now, they can literally say anything in the news. Uh, the, the new side effect of the, the coronavirus is that it turns you into a smurf. So if you start appearing blue, uh, you might want to get a, a Q-tip shoved three feet into your brain. And people would buy that shit. New symptoms on a daily basis brought to you by low-level radiation poisoning because we love experimenting on the population because we're a bunch of satanic crazy can estrogen and other sex hormones help men survive COVID-19? Men are more likely than women to die of the coronavirus, so scientists are treating them with something women have more of, female sex hormones. There is a striking difference between the number of men and women in the intensive care unit, and men are clearly doing worse said Dr. Sarah Gandahari, a pulmonologist and intensive care physician at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles who is the principal investigator for the progesterone study. She said, 75% of the hospital's intensive care patients and those on ventilators are men. And pregnant women, who are usually immunocompromised but have high levels of estrogen and progesterone, tend to have mild courses of the disease. Uh, so something about being a woman is protective, and something about pregnancy is protective, and that makes us think about hormones. Dr. Gandahari said. So basically, these fucking morons said, uh, the women have high estrogen and they're not suffering, so let's give men estrogen. <laughs> Who reads this dog shit and think it's okay? We see this bias across the life course, Dr. Klein said. Older men are still disproportionately affected and that suggests to me it's got to be something genetic or something else. That's just not hormonal. Estrogen has immune modulatory properties, don't get me wrong, she continued. You can get a beneficial effect in both men and women, but if women are better at recovery at 93 years old, I doubt it's hormones. There is truth to this. Women have higher levels of immune response, which makes them less susceptible to viral infection, but they also develop autoimmunity much easier due to this hyperimmune response. But that doesn't have as much to do with hormones as it does to do with their DNA. Females have more immune markers in their actual genes than males do. The reason why sex bias immunity exists may lie in the evolution and preservation of mankind. Evolutionarily, during reproductive years, an enhanced response to infections should help maintain health for reproduction. 
In aged women, reproductive function is not required. Enhanced immune reactivity, along with changes in immune cells during aging, causes sex-specific differences in immunity. The sex-specific expression of genes may explain why women with a similar genetic background show higher immune reactivity or develop autoimmunity at a higher rate than men. Guys, it took me three minutes to find that research while I was in the middle of texting my boy, I mean, I mean, girlfriend. Like, what kind of effort did these doctors, these experts, and scientists put in if I debunked it in a minute with the study I found while jerking off on Google? Here's another study. Endogenous testosterone appears to be immunomodulatory rather than immunosuppressive. The point finalized by that study is that our hormones are supposed to be in sync with natural ratios. There's an ideal amount of testosterone and estrogen for men and women separately. Excess estrogen for a female is a bad thing, just like excess testosterone in a male can cause negatives. Obviously, if we were polluting the water with testosterone instead of estrogen, then there would likely have already been a solution found for females. The effect of testosterone on females is masculinizing, but no one seems to care when you shoot men up with estrogen. For someone to say that giving men estrogen and lowering their testosterone is reasonable is ridiculous. If anything, you're going to cause more inflammation. Anyone with half a brain knows all the negative side effects of low testosterone. And you can find many studies showing improvements in illnesses with testosterone replacement. We know that this infertility agenda in men is just another part of the depopulation that the psychopaths in control are trying to enact. The researcher that wrote the article published on April 22nd explains what I said earlier. Females have certain genes that regulate their immune system differently. That researcher, however, is recommending a specific drug, Premarin, which is normally used uh, to treat hot flashes and menopause, and the idea is that giving men estrogen will change their DNA to be more like women. It's completely preposterous. Uh, this is simply another ploy by Big Pharma to make a shitload of money by selling drugs, harming people's health, making them dependent on the medical system. And this just gets crazier and crazier. Estrogen patch for symptoms. So what we're doing is randomizing patients who are men over age 18 or women over age 55 in that they're postmenopausal to by chance either get an estrogen patch put on for seven days or placebo and to see how they do if they are less hospitalizations for COVID, less admissions to the ICU, and in fact, less intubations. This amount of a patch, seven days put on for just once, will not have any feminizing effect on the men who are getting it. It may help the women who are over 55 to feel a bit better when they are postmenopausal, but it will not have any downside feminizing effect for these patients. It's so obvious that these pharmaceutical companies are trying to cash out on some type of drug as opposed to natural alternatives like following a healthy diet and taking certain vitamins. But was this bioweapon of a virus made specifically to make men infertile? Was it not effective enough so they are trying to give men estrogen now? Are the testes really a reservoir? A recent study suggesting that the novel accumulates in the testes has gained significant media attention. Testicles may make men more vulnerable. The virus could linger in the testicles, making men prone to longer, more severe cases of the illness. So my speculation on this one is that men have their cell phones closer to their balls then women have their phones to their ovaries. The ovaries are also inside the body and protected by a fair bit of tissue. So there's a few possibilities. One is that the bioweapon is specifically targeting male fertility. Two is that the excess oxidative stress from radio waves due to the location of the testicles, you know, could be the reason. Three, it could have something to do with zinc being stored in the testes. Maybe the body is trying to mobilize zinc or something to do with the virus. I don't really know. You know, there's no point of trying to debunk this BS anymore because it's so beyond ridiculous, you wonder how anyone could believe it at all. It's absolutely despicable how by controlling the mainstream news and the mainstream media, everything everyone believes is a lie. Uh, so, you know, let me know what you guys think of this. Uh, you know, again, back to what we said earlier, it's very important to understand that there has been a war on men's testosterone and it's not just with this you know there, there's other things that are far more uh, concerning i uh, definitely check out my video how to boost hormones naturally uh, if you're curious you know you want to see some improvements in that 
Uh, if you guys want to support me, of course, just drop a like on the video, subscribe so you can be unsubscribed next week, and uh, leave a comment down below for Frankie Boy. If you guys do want to support me further than that, check out some of the stuff down in the comments below. Definitely sign up for the newsletter on franktestafaro.com. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Hope you're doing okay. Oh,